Lesson number nine, diminished pattern and second inversion. You can visit the link in the description below to download a free PDF copy of this lesson so you can follow along. If you've missed our previous two lessons, you might want to go ahead and check them out now, as this lesson might be a little hard to follow if you don't understand the concepts presented in the previous lessons. In last week's lesson, we've looked at the first inversion of our original diminished pattern from lesson number seven. It looks something like this. We arrived at this pattern by taking our original pattern and transposing the lowest note of the pattern up an octave. We're going to continue the process in this week's lesson by transposing the bottom note of the pattern from lesson number eight up an octave. So in our first pattern we have C sharp, E, G, C. So we'll take the C sharp up an octave to get Now we can do what we did with the other patterns and take this pattern up and down in minor thirds and all the notes will remain within the same diminished scale. If you're having trouble feeling where your fingers are supposed to go within the scale, one thing I like to do is block each group of the pattern. So instead of approaching it from a linear sort of a melodic way where you're each note is separate like this. What we can do is play each four notes from the pattern as a block chord. This was helpful for me when learning the other patterns also um, and it would work equally as, as well with any of the patterns. comfortable with the block chords, it should be easy to simply arpeggiate them and get the pattern that we were looking for um, in the original lesson. I missed some notes there, but you get the idea. Okay, so we've put this pattern also with voicings just like the other lessons, the same voicings. variation we're going to anticipate um, each pattern by um, half a beat if you're thinking of eighth notes or two sixteenth notes if you're thinking of the pattern in sixteenth notes so if we've got our metronome on and we're counting in sixteenth notes it would be something like this one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a If you're thinking in eighth notes, it would sound something like this. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and with the voicings, one E and a two E and a three and a four E. Once again, like we discussed in the last lesson, um, this rhythmic variation is simply to give the pattern some forward motion and also just to give us something rhythmic to work on as well uh, while we're transposing this pattern up and down in minor thirds. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Please feel free to leave a comment below or send me a message with any suggestions or comments you have on future lessons that you'd like to see.